Hey everybody, Ryan Gronfin here, author, speaker, chef, restaurant tour founder of where is it? The Restaurant Boss, uh, clickbacon.com, scalemyrestaurant.com, and of course, make it happen wherever it is. This is a green screen behind me, so I get confused. Anyways, I am so excited to bring another episode of what we like to call Out of the Weeds, where we go out and we find operators that we think are just doing amazing things and have really great stories to share with you. Uh, today is absolutely no exception. We have V from V Cellar Door in Juneau, Alaska. So all of you cruisers who are cruising through Alaska, which it's like top of my bucket list to get on a cruise to Alaska, mostly because let's not make this political today because Alaska is changing. And um, I really want to be able to see it in its glory. I hope I hope it stays in its glory. I hope we're able to, to do whatever we got to do for that. But today's not political. Today is about restaurants. So um, I'm not going to butcher an introduction and try to tell you how awesome V is. I'm going to let her brag and tell you a little bit about herself and then I think we're going to cover a topic today that is really about winning in the mental game. And that's something that I know V in our membership meetings that we do live with other operators, V is always raising her hand and adding comments to people. And there's such great nuggets of just the mindset of a successful restaurant operator. So you'll find her on Diners, Drivers and Dives. She'll tell you about that. But V, tell them a little bit about you. Hi, everyone. I'm V, short for Venetia. Everyone calls me V. Um, I'm the owner of V Cellar Door, which is a, a fusion restaurant in the basement in Juneau. One of our basements. We don't have very many. I think we have two. <laughs> and I have been in Juneau for 25 years. I started my restaurant almost nine years ago. Um, unheard of to have fusion food in Juneau. And um, we're still here uh, nine years later. And when you say fusion, like I know people think of like fusion with some sort of Asian. This is Korean with a lot of Mexican, mm -hmm. but more like South American, like Mexican right. type influences. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's got like, that sweet heat and that bold heat. Yeah. And a lot of like really cool, like fried rices where you're bringing in jalapenos as well as kimchi. And you're doing like a burrito that looked awesome and nachos and check out her menu. It's, it's awesome. It's so, fun. so the reason this came about is a couple months ago, we're on one of our membership calls and we're just sort of asking questions around and V mentioned something that really got my attention and I wanted to follow up with it, which was when COVID started a couple of years ago, we did a series here at the restaurant boss. And one of the things I said early on was don't bury your head in the sand. This is not a time to back off. Like it's scary. We don't know what's going to happen. Obviously now it's easy to look back two years later and be like, it's not that bad. We kind of got it figured out. There's still challenges, but it was scary at that time. Restaurants were closing. Cities were shutting down. The stock market was crashing. Let's try to remember two years ago, and depending when you're watching this, this could have been 10 years ago, but try to put yourself back in that mindset. It was a scary time. And I believe in history. I believe in learning about history. And in 2008, I was just getting started in my career. We had saved up some money. We were trying to get a restaurant open. And when the world sort of collapsed in 2008, I, I made a couple of decisions. I said, one, I'm going to research this. I'm going to learn what led up to it. And I'm going to learn from what happens after. So when this happens again, I'm prepared for it. And the biggest thing I learned was more millionaires, more wealth is created in times of uncertainty than times of certainty. I learned that there is more opportunity in times of uncertainty than certainty. I learned that if you are prepared and steadfast, that everything will come back. It will change. It will be different. But if we get weak and back down from the challenge in front of us, we will succumb to the pressures. If we forge through it, if we are strong, if we seize the opportunity, we'll look back on it. And just be so thankful we did that. So I felt it was really important to kind of share those lessons and put out the message of don't bury your head in the sand. This is the time to dig in. This is the time to work harder. This is the time that while everyone else is shutting down. So I'm going to let V take it from here because I think that advice served you well. And I want to hear kind of what happened to you after that. Thanks, Ryan. Appreciate that. Um, in two, early 2020, um, 19 was the beginning of the words in September so that things were going on in another country. And here in America, I think we felt a little disjointed, meaning that's there. That's really not going to come here. And then bam, um, in January of 2020, 
we really had uh, a crisis on our hands. And I've never lived through a pandemic before, um, but I was, uh, it's two years ago. So I was six, six and a half years into the business. And even though I've been in the business, the restaurant world for 35 years in this different aspects, I've only had my restaurant for six years, my own. And I had a friend who um, came to me as I was watching all of these restaurants around me who were James Beard runner ups and the woman next to me has five restaurants and this is so popular. And the, the guy down the street has two restaurants and he's been all over the news and all over shows and stuff. And um, these are people that I thought I, I were my mentors. I looked up to, I thought they're obviously smart and I'm watching each of them start to close their doors. And it was daunting to me. I thought, well, what do I know? I need to follow suit. If they're doing it, I should do it. And as I was contemplating this and everything that comes with it, like closing my doors. And back then we thought, oh, it'll be just a, a month, maybe a month. Two weeks. Two weeks. We'll be good to go and we'll be fine. And so my husband and I sat down and we we're talking it through and trying to figure out how what, what are we going to do with staff, all the dynamics of what happens when you close a restaurant. And a girlfriend of mine handed me this video from Ryan. And she said, I'm not too sure this is a decision you should make. And I said, but, you know, I was, look around us. Everybody else is doing it. So uh, she sent me this video and it was a video of Ryan saying just that. He said, look, you have two choices. You can close or not close. Whatever decision you make, don't look back on it, make your decision. But it's not the time for you to stick your head in the sand no matter what you do. You have to make a decision. If you're going to come out of this, come out of this like the phoenix from the fire is really what I felt he was saying. And I thought to myself, I don't, I didn't really want to close. Like I didn't want to close. I knew what was happening. We didn't know the parameters of it, but I didn't want to close. And people will remember when you close and not when you reopen. Um, and Ryan was like, if you're going to do this, push through this, like do whatever you can to keep your name out there, to keep your word out there, the social media alive, you go with the flow. And I, we listened to him for 30 minutes and it completely changed the way we saw things. I had no idea who Ryan was. I had no idea what the restaurant boss was. It was just a girlfriend of mine who said, and, and they literally like threw it at me. Like, you have to watch this right now. Do not make any more decisions to you watch this. And Ryan was spot on. Like, he's like, push through. You can do this. And he's so right. Once I sat back and thought about it, my husband and I talked about it. We did some research like Ryan did. And we said, man, how can we do this if everybody else is closing? And I actually got backlash for making the decision from the restaurants around me who said, why are you staying open? Why would you do that? There's lots of reasons now. Hindsight's always 2020 of why we did that. Was it scary? I had to let go of all of my staff in the beginning. So by the third phone call, my husband had to take over because I was a, a crying mess. Um, Cause we don't know when you, you build your staff and you have to let them go. It's like, there's all that work. There's everything we did. And in the back of my head, it kept saying, Ryan's like, it's okay. You're going to move this. You're going to move this. You're going to keep going. So we honestly thought it would be just a couple of weeks or a month. We'll push through. So they allowed us to do takeout and um curbside which was a whole new thing for us we had never done that now we're running up from the basement up flights the stairs to get to the outside to bring the customer the to the car their stuff and we did it we even had a little box out there in the beginning because people were afraid they didn't know yeah they didn't want to touch anything remember that when they told us to quarantine our amazon packages to leave them in the garage for like two days yeah, I know. It's hard to get back to where we were then. but Exactly. Complete. And I was like in a face mask and the suits and the gloves and the up to the here because you don't, you want everybody to know that you were safe. And that's super important. And one of the biggest thing is, I've told you, Ryan, a hundred times, I'm in the repeat customer business, not the one-time customer business. So my husband and I ran that restaurant for six weeks by ourselves. Same hours, seven days a week. I think in the third week, we actually went down to six days just so we could have one day to regroup. And my husband's a pilot. So he went from pilot to restaurant tour like that. I was going to say, side note, was <laughs> no one was taking flight lessons at the time? No. Because it's middle of winter, so they weren't flying anyways or what? He still had stuff he had to do, but he could because he, he teaches. teaches. Yeah. So you're in, a, you're in a closed cockpit, closed right. quarter. When I started flying again in the pandemic, I have pictures of... My instructor and I, with our mask and our our mic boom, we would put inside the mask. <laughs> My husband was teaching the ground school 
And in the hangar, he had to put all those chairs apart. And finally, it just came to a point where his students said, we're going to hold up and wait a few weeks and come back. Because it was just yeah. it was the dynamics. You're like ducking underneath planes that are in the hangar to, to sit people. So it was it was very interesting. Um, and it was and I, and I know why people become I'm beginning to understand that why they become rich or millionaires, because it's hard. When I say hard, we're talking easy 16, 18 hour days. Um, like, and, and it was like the first year was open again. Like there was a feeling of we're, we're starting brand new. We're starting right all over again. And we had to pivot continuously. There'd be a new thing in the beginning. I'm sure you'll remember it was new rules, new changes. We don't know what this is. Don't touch that. Don't drink that. Don't, don't go here. Don't go there. So every day, my husband and I had to find a new way to keep us going. I, I got out of my comfort zone and learned how to do videos, uh, learned how to do um, quickie things of our food and to-go boxes. We created notes that we have kept to this day on our uh, little knock-knock jokes on the top of our to-go boxes. And because we wanted people to know this, this, this is a rough day for everyone, not just us, for everyone. And we wanted to have a little bit of humor once they open up that food, because that's what we give in V's is how do I bring these to you. And let me tell you, I, I really, Ryan, your words ring over. I watched your video after I made the decision, probably about six times. <laughs> Just to was, make sure you didn't miss anything. Like, right. wait, was this a joke? <laughs> yeah. Maybe he was wrong. Like, and in he's time, actually like, telling me to do this. <laughs> yes. Right. And I'm like, all right, I don't know this guy from Do Schmo and my friend Heather, who I I hold such a height. Her and her husband have been with me since the beginning. And there are times, I'll be honest, on the hundredth time, I'll go, oh, I get what you mean. Oh, I understand now. And they're just so patient and kind with me. Like, they, we get it. And when she she gives me book after book after book to read, and like six pages in, I'm like, what? Da, da, da. And then she gives me you. And I was like, uh, something about every word you said rang true in here. And I had to believe in here that it would come out. So it was, it still is two years later, the best decision that we have made. And because we stayed open and, and pushed and pushed every day, my husband and I would walk in there and literally we would leave notes for each other when we got home from our 16 hour day and go, you go upstairs, I go downstairs, let's spend some time away for a couple hours so that we can digress our own heads and still be a loving, kind partner. I mean, not only do we lose we were on the brink of losing our business, which we had just, it was in 2019 was our best year yet. And they you had just filmed Diners, Drivers and Dives. And so that was yeah. about to air and like you were about to blow up. Yeah. it. We filmed you were it coming in into summer. the cruise season. Like, yep. And it was supposed to be our biggest cruise season to date. Um, we had filmed in August. They were show. they had showed it that first Friday in December of 2019. They were sending me someone to help me to learn to control the masses, to learn how to deal with an extremely popular restaurant. They were sure of it to a point where they've done this for 40 seasons, right? So they knew what they had to do. And once, once I March- feel like in 30 years from now, we're still going to be watching Diner Jardin's Ives. It's going to be like his grandkids now. <laughs> It's the truth. How he keeps doing it. It's amazing. It's truly amazing. 40 seasons later. On the 120th season in year 2324. And we've covered every restaurant. Every restaurant in the world has been featured on Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives. It's the truth. <laughs> right. We're in Antarctica now. Right. <laughs> We're now in Antarctica, right? <laughs> um, we So we called them and we said, we have a funny feeling you don't have to send us anyone so that was daunting to be the what you feel is this close right and there's there's a thing that i a quote that i say that i've created it's called humble yourself and humble yourself often because it was very humbling it was like wow all right well that was a really great uh try at something that is not going to work and they're like we're going to be here for you we're going to help you uh we'll, we'll just keep hearing your show when you're hearing the deaf ears it's or, or a restricted audience, like they can't do anything. Like they can't do anything. So uh, that was, it, it all felt like it was pressure. And I kept listening to the voice uh, that you said repeatedly, like you need to figure out ways 
to, to do it different. So when, if you do like, if you had closed, if you do reopen or if you're still open, how do you change it up so you can still get people to come in at when this is done or when they're allowed to. So it was constant vigilance. Like you had said, Ryan, about stay in their face, like keep our, our word out there. And my, we had lost, we're on the verge of losing the restaurant. My husband had, had he had to shut down his business because you could not fly six feet apart. And they were just in Juno, they were pretty big about it. Um, we, we were supposed to be married in March. Like we were supposed to get married in March. So the wedding's gone. The business is, his business is gone. Mine's on the brink of, ah, and to, it would have been really easy, honestly, to stick our heads in the sand. And it would have been, it would have felt better. I could have licked my wounds. Um, we we're like, we'll just go hang out in Gustavus, small little town, 20 minutes away, and just stay in our happy place until this is all over. If we had done that, we would not be here today. I watched my restaurant be the only restaurant in a two and a half block radius as the only one open and doing takeout. It's like, whoa, whoa. A couple tried, um, and I'll tell you, two, three weeks in, they closed. It was, and at that three mark, week mark, you go, okay, isn't this over yet? Okay, we're about to get break out of this. And it kept getting worse. And Ryan, you kept saying in your videos, okay, what are we doing now? What are you doing today? What's going to happen? And I'm like, oh, I'm so, ti I'm so tired. But it was a choice. And when I make that choice, you got to see it through. And I am where I am today because of your video. I would not be here today if it wasn't. I am sure, I'm 100% sure that V Cellador would not have survived. And thank you for, for sharing that story. And thank you for persevering and working through and, and everything you did. And I, again, you said humble your, I think it was humble yourself and humble yourself often. Um, you know, we... We have to remind ourselves of how fragile everything can be and how every day is a street fight and we have to get out there and do it. And I think that's the difference. And that's what I really wanted to go here with this was, all right, so now, you know, what did you learn from all of that and how is that serving you? Because again, it just, I'm always amazed at the mental strength. Whenever we're talking to other people, you always got this like mental nugget. Like even today we were talking to someone about ramen and he's like, ramen doesn't really do well with to go. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, you got to switch that in your head. That's a you thing. That's not a them thing. That's a you thing. That's a limiting belief in your head. You need to change that. And like, I love that about you. So like, where does this mental strength come from? How is it serving you? Like, what do you do to nurture your mind? I know I heard you say your friend gives you books and books and books. Like, um, yeah, as a restaurateur, we don't have time to read all the books. But I'll tell I you used to listen. I would always, I would just, I would listen in the car whenever I could. If I was doing prep, I, I would have like an earbud in, but I wasn't listening to music. I was listening to audiobooks. Right. I listen to audiobooks. I've because I've learned. Um, I've learned two things about books. One is um don't read in bed because then it lends up on uh, two pages in. Because when a restauranter friendly gets to bed, two pages, I wake up with the glasses and the, yeah. and the book on my face. I'm like, well, whew, we got two pages. Um, I also learned that if I'm at half a chapter or a chapter in and it hasn't quite got me yet, and I've got 10 books waiting. I'm going to need forward. Some books are going to work for you. And that may work for someone else that someone said, oh, this was great for me. But it's it, the whole thing, like you said, is a mindset, whether it's the books, whether it's the keeping the restaurant open. You inspired me to, it, people say it all the time when we hear it, Ryan, and I don't think that we acknowledge it sometimes. The words you that came out of your mouth that you thought of ahead of time, you were, you were, football fields ahead of people when you said the words you said and it, it was it was crazy it was daunting but it had to start here i had to believe it in my mind if i didn't if i didn't believe it in my mind i could have never have done it with my hands and my feet right so I had, I really watched your video again and again. And I was like, all right, this is crazy. And then when you hear it enough, and I don't care what it is that you say to yourself, repeat it over and over. Yes, I can do ramen to go. Yes, I can keep my restaurant open. Yes, I, I know it's a pandemic, but we are going to be at the other end. And I've said this before, I'm a girl who owns a restaurant, Korean fusion restaurant in the basement, you know, if I'm still alive after nine years, 
a pandemic's not going to slow me down, but you're the one who taught me that. Like you said words that changed my entire life. So once you hear these words, and I don't care who people get from Ryan, you are a great person. You've got so much skill behind you and so much mental knowledge that if I had just took your words and put them into motion, I'm pretty sure by the way you spoke it in that video that I was going to be successful. Now, it didn't happen the next day and it doesn't happen six weeks later, but now I, hindsight's 2020, 20, I look back and go, I am now doing caterings I was never doing before. I now have people in my restaurant when people are empty. I now have people who are so frozen from being closed for so long. They can't get unstuck. They can't get unstuck. The rust is built up. The bearings are seized. The bearing, and, and not only that, they their customers, it, 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 you know, we create new habits. People have quickly. Away. Right. And it's, and it's, we always say it's hard to, it's hard to stop a bad habit, but it's easy, great new one. No, but, um, people make decisions and, and when they, they pull on that door and you're not there, they make another decision. They're still hungry or they're still wanting that experience. They're going to go find it somewhere else. I didn't want them to know when we closed, I wanted to stay in their mind that we were open. Were there lots of empty days? Were there days where you went, Oh my God. Oh my God. Like, what can I sell? What are we going to sell? What are we going to do? But we pushed through it and people were very supportive. Once they realized what we were doing, they were very supportive and it gave them a little bit of hope. Like, I think you gave me hope and I gave our customers and our staff hope literally one by one. I brought my staff back as much as I could. And, and we have a super clean restaurant anyway, but they were learning the pain. I was creating new training programs. I created videos for my staff of how to cook things during this time. So once my staff did get back on, I didn't go, Phew. I did for a couple, I took three days off, three days when I got my staff back on. Who six weeks into it, my husband and I were like, I love you, see you in a day. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I thought, okay, now that we're still super small, you were like, okay, what are you going to do with this time? Like, what are you going to do? So it wasn't, just getting to get a staff back on it was like, how do we move? And be and because everybody else was closed without realizing it, you helped us move exponentially faster. Meaning people now are just starting to do what we were doing a year and a half ago, even though it was to an empty auditorium, right? We were still doing it. So now we've had lots of practice and we're getting good at what we started back then. And that was falling, I say, on deaf ears. But now people are just trying now to get the wheels moving and whether they close their restaurant uh, for temporarily, their pipes were frozen or this. I mean, when you're not there, when you're things happen and it becomes harder and harder and harder mentally to conquer. To conquer closing the doors like yep. it's, it's a mind game. You have to start here. If you don't start here, if you don't believe it here, nothing you do with these is going to matter. And, you know, moving COVID aside now, you know, whether whenever you're watching this, whether we're still there, which unfortunately we're still kind of there now or whether we're not, whatever, you know, like you said, like it's one up here first. The game is one up there. And I just wish and my mission at the restaurant boss, amongst many others, is, you know, obviously I want to improve the restaurant industry. I want the restaurant industry to be a place that people look at as a real career. Uh, an opportunity where they can work at a restaurant and raise a family and and do all of the things that we don't think of. We sometimes think of the restaurant industry as you're either an owner or it's transient. You're just here until the next thing. But I talk to so many restaurant people who their goals are to be an owner, to be an owner, to be an owner. And that's great. But we don't necessarily see that doctors don't all have goals of owning their own practices. Accountants don't have goals of owning their own practices. You can be an accountant and work for an accounting firm and make a great living. I want that for the restaurant. I want restaurant managers to be able to make a great living. I want restaurant servers and bartenders and cooks to be able to make a great living. But in order for us to do that, we have to grow as an industry. What we're going through right now, these challenges of the mass exodus of people from the restaurant industry is because we haven't grown as an industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. And in order for us to grow as an industry, we're going to have to get in here and do some work. It starts with that mindset. And, I, and I'll be honest, since I came up through the restaurant business, meaning I started as a dishwasher at 12, I started as a dishwasher. 
I have been a server. I have been a cook. I have been a host. I've been a bartender. I've been every part of that restaurant life. And it bothered me because we're all, and I, I use the tooth as one, we're all a toothache away or a broken tooth away from the welfare line. And I kept saying to myself, but we're doing well, like servers, let's be honest, in a good restaurant, you can be making two to $500 a night. If you're doing that three nights a week, I have a bachelor's degree. I left my job that I had a bachelor's degree with making what I was making because I was actually making more at the restaurant I was working at. And I knew if I had done it full time, I thought, well, and you're right. We go from server to owner because there isn't in between. I started, I did exactly what you said. It starts here. It starts here. And I'm surprised how quickly it moves. I said to my husband, I looked at my husband, I said, if you stay with us a year, I'm going to give you three days, three paid days off. Bottom line, I'm giving you three pages. I don't know how to do it, but we're going to do it. And he looks at me and goes, what do you mean? I said, anybody who's in our restaurant currently, who's been with, it, with us a year, will get on the books, three pay days off, they can take anywhere they want. And then in a year two, they are going to get four pay days off. And then we're going to skip a year. And in year four, they're going to get five days off. And you could add those together if you want to, even though I want them to use the get, I want them to use them each, each year to have that time. And my husband looks at me and goes, huh? I said, it's okay. We've, we've lost all this money. We were, we had not gotten to the part where we were sitting pretty yet. Right. We were not, we were just about sitting pretty. And I thought to myself, if we, and I, and I firmly believe this, if I'm going to ask you to do a job and if I don't give you the right tools to do it, you can't get that job done. My job is to make them the most amount of money. Why? Because if I'm making them the most amount of money, then I'm automatically making the most amount of money. So let's invest. And invest doesn't mean just training. When I was doing this time that you were talking to me about, you kept saying, what can we do? What can we do? What can we do? And I honestly, I made two videos in the kitchen. I stopped. I was like, wait, that's important. But I need to figure out how to make this the job that people want to have. They deserve Everybody leaves a job and goes to the state job, the job they tell you you're supposed to have, the college. You know what? We are so top heavy with degrees right now and people who have nothing in the trades. This is a great job. The best part about this job, there's a beginning, a middle, and then the same day. You come in, you clock in, you serve some people, you make them happy. When 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 they look at my, I have one staffer that says, the biggest compliment I get is when they look at me and say, are you the owner? You must be the owner. And I'm like, that is so cool. Thank you for saying that because that means she did it so well. What we do, the conversation we have along with the food that it meant something. So I'm like, I need to keep her. How do I keep her? Two of my staff left during COVID. Well, I had more than two well, because we had to let away go at one time. They all left at one time, but two kept gone. Well, three and then four, but two <laughs> Because <laughs> they all had to do something right different. They couldn't just do 12 hours a week. So well, two of them went to state jobs. So I don't believe people these days, to, I hear a lot, I should say, people say, oh, people are just at, not working, not coming to work. No, there was a shift, Ryan. There was a shift. People got in the They're not coming to work for you. Right. Exactly. And I don't mean you, V, and I don't necessarily mean you working no, out there, but yes. you know who you mm -hmm. are. When I say right. plenty of people are going to work. If you're having a hard time finding staff, and I'm not just talking about, well, the applications have slowed down, but everybody's experiencing that. I'm saying if you can't find staff and you can't keep staff, mm -hmm. stop blaming them and start looking in the mirror. They are not coming to work for you. And it's unheard of in our industry to do what I'm doing. So unheard of that I had someone call me, I won't say a local business here in town who called me and goes, what are you doing? And I told them, they're like, we here, we here. So there must be a group consortium Good. Going, well, I'm one aware of, that you're giving your people the health benefits. So we, started, we did something else. Living where we live, you know, is Alaska. We live in Juneau. It's closed at the end. So you got to fly or, 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 or boat in or out. We have a healthcare system here, but I wouldn't say it was like a Seattle health system. So there's something called is that um, is seattle considered a good healthcare system well, well because it's i say it's down the road it's like a real city <laughs> it's, a real, it's a big city it's a real city we're the capital city here in alaska but we're talking about alaska right so <laughs> it's huge and if you don't i call it if you don't have the perfect boo-boo you get medevac medevac is a big thing here so and it's 50 to seventy thousand dollars for your flight whether they take you to anchorage or, or seattle so the thing was i said bing my husband 
I said, we have to do something about this. There's an insurance you can get that's $105 a year. And it counts for not only you, but everybody in your household. Like whoever lives in your household at the time is covered. And if something happens, it pays for your medevac. Pays for the medevac. Yep. So I offered now, the second thing we've done is now we give six, if you've been with us six months, you get medevac insurance for the year. Bottom line, you're on the books. You're there. And I went to this company, one of the three that we have, which pretty much they're all the same. Three different. Oh, like Medistar companies. or something like that? Yeah, Medstar, yeah, Life Med, Star. Life Med yeah. and then two or three others. And I said, you've never done this before, but I want to talk to you. And being, of course, being a pilot, it was a really good way in. And at our Christmas party, I always try to have fun, unique, different Christmas parties. They're always surprised. Well, Bing and I rented this trolley. We put all the staff on and their family. And the first place we stopped was the life med hangar. We went onto the airport through the security gates into the hangar. And my staff is like, what the heck? we walk in and the lady says, hi, are you here? And they start talking about the planes. Like we got tours of the planes and my staff is still thinking this is, where's the party, right? Where's right, the party? Right. I want a drink. <laughs> and then they went in and after they were all done and, and the pilots stopped talking, the lady stopped talking, I jumped up and I said, so you all who have been with me six months and at 20 hours a week, if you're doing, which is two shifts, everybody's there, you all get your, your medevac insurance. And they just looked at me and I'm like, I want you to understand how much we care about you. It's important for you guys to understand that this is not just a job. This could be a career for you. I want you, no one stays in a job forever. I want you to stay as long as you possibly can. And then of course, from there, we went into a great party, but now we're offering two things. And that's when I got that call from that local company that said, you're offering life insurance or, or health insurance of some kind. I said, I am. And uh, MedStar is now promoting what we've done. Cause they said to me, well, we've never done this before. I'm like, yeah, no time like the present. So we, the, and now they're excited. Now they want to post. Now they probably, now they put together a package for other restaurants. Yes. Yep. yes. And I'm like, go. And so my husband said to me, I love dearly said, why are you telling everyone? Maybe this is something you want to keep secret. What if people don't come to work? With I'm like, I want everyone to do this. I'm going to talk as loud as I can, because if there's a way we could create a healthcare system by the amount of restaurants that we have going on. So this was still again, a mindset. Everybody around me was like, the people, again, I looked up to were like, why are you doing this? What's going on? You're, and then I had one say to me, you're going to make me look bad. I said, well, then look good and do the same thing. And it's the dollar amount. Yes, it comes out of my pocket. This is out of money that could be going into my coffers. But in turn, they're working two, three times as hard because I'm giving to them and they're giving back to me. And I'm going to give them not only the benefits, and we're still working, like we're still working on the benefits. How do we make this better? 401ks. Why can't we have them in the restaurant business? Why have we never had them? The There's a, Washington does a thing that I told you about that I'm really still researching. It's called either the long table and a bunch of restaurants and owners have gotten together. And if something happens, to one of their staff and they have a little thing on the tables, you'll see it. It's a little, you can put money in an envelope and it goes to this company. And if something happens to you, you don't have to have a special anything. You call up and go, I'm a cook at so-and-so's restaurant and my tooth is gone. It's cost me $2,500 is what it costs for a tooth here, right? So they just give, you send them the bill, they pay it. I'm like, why can't we do that in every state? We can. We can. We can. If we more can. of us start thinking the way you are and start putting the betterment of the entire industry as our goal of see it doesn't matter what you do in your restaurant if parents are at home telling their kids not to work in the restaurant industry then the pool has shrunk the amount of people to pull from so it doesn't matter how good you are if we're in an industry that nobody wants to work in you're going to do better than others but you're not going to do as well as you can we need to change the whole thing we need people to say you should work in the restaurant industry. It's a phenomenal industry. You could make a great living. Now, I know some of you out there are going to say this is ridiculous. It's nights, it's weekends, it's this or that. But you know what? For some of you, working at night is great. For some of you, working at weekends are great. Like, I know that there's challenges, but it's really easy to get into a doctor's office when you're off on Monday and Tuesday. It's really easy to play golf when you're off on Monday and Tuesday. Depends on your lifestyle. But the point is, we have to change the conversation 
Thank you. And around it's around the restaurant it's industry. Right. And we have to stop saying or blaming everybody else for our challenges. And it has to start here. I truly believe I won't see the repercussions of my actions till after years. I'm dead. Years. Years. Years, but I will tell you, it starts with one, and 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 I'm and, and as you said, I call it rage against the machine. We're not just fighting against other industry owners. My staff, traditionally, you and I both know, cooks are are, are, are have drinking and alcohol problems uh, uh, and drug problems, and servers have drinking problems, sometimes drug problems, and and different lifestyle. The lifestyle is different. They they tend to be out late. They leave from work and they do this or that. They don't understand, and then they leave with that money in their pocket. By the time they get home, you and I have done it, and there's twenty bucks out of the three hundred you made. Like we, I'm I'm also fighting against the people who I'm trying to help. They and I've seen it. I've seen it happen in my restaurant. They look at me like, why do I need that? Like, why? Yeah, it's, 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 so I call it rage against the machine. We're, we're changing a whole society, including them themselves, because they have been taught for so many years that they don't, this is not what we get, or they're not deserving in some way. Right. It's like, they don't even understand what the concept of it is because no one has taken care of them before. Why would it start now? So I don't believe what I'm doing, honestly, Ryan, that I'll be able to say, hey, hey, look what we did. I'm going to be long gone. But if I can keep this momentum going and I can change one person and have that conversation from someone's parents who say, you know what? Yeah, you need to go work in a restaurant. You should go work in a restaurant. You get this, 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 and this. Never mind the amount of stress that is gone. Like literally, I had a state job. I had that. I had the college the house, you know, the picket fence this is what they told you you had to do. I did that. And I would look around me and there are these miserable people still striving because someone told them to do it. You know what? I'm like, be happy. Find what you like to do. We have so much fun. And I wouldn't say every day it's La! at the restaurant, but it's, we have a good time. Or right? It's a job. It's a job. If you can get all those things, a beginning and middle and end in the same day, I would come into my office and then I do something good. And then the following week, my boss would be like, you did that so well, let's give you this project and this project and this project. And I'm like, Ooh. and oh, same hours, same pay, same everything. If you work really hard in a restaurant, your money's dependent on you. Now, if any team members are watching this, now is the opportunity for you. Because if you conform to the same ideals of if you show up to work late, leave early, expect more. And I'm not saying you shouldn't get what you deserve. Absolutely you should. But what I'm saying is if you show up and do the job now and work hard, maybe you'll be a little underpaid. You probably will be because the industry hasn't caught up yet with what you probably deserve, but you will get promoted so fast right now. Now is an opportunity for team members who want to make a career in the industry to go from serving to managing from managing to general manager to go from washing dishes to cooking from cooking to being the chef it can happen so fast for you right now the restaurant industry is changing it's changing fast there's there's huge opportunity out there for everyone but and say and, and communication has changed um i think in our day and age we didn't have cell phones we didn't have texting we have a variety of those things um Open your mouth and say to your boss, hey, I, I really like doing this. I'd like to take on this. I had someone recently who just did this in my restaurant and it made my husband and I go because you remember, you're also changing the way the boss sees you. It, we we tend to put things in boxes because that's we're owners. We're running 100 miles an hour. Say something to your boss. I'd like to take over the, the liquor inventory. Can I do that? Because I think there's some things that we're not getting that I think we can get. I'd love to discuss with you. I have these ideas. I had some do this three weeks or a month ago and she's been doing it. And I looked at my husband, I said, we have to give her a raise and I want to give her more responsibilities. Look at her do it. She just asked to do one more thing and I'm not going to dump a bunch of stuff on her, but I'm going to say, Hey, you like doing this. I want you to excel at what you like to do. But if she didn't say anything to me, I think we would not have shown. So she's helping change me. She's helping me see things that are different that are, uh, she's standing out. And I think every team member of any place, and it doesn't even have to be just restaurants. It could be, your words speak through Ryan over so many different 
places of businesses. I think what we say here, it could take out the word restaurant. And you can put oh, in whatever you boss. want. Plumbing boss, the right? HVAC right. boss, <laughs> right? And it really it floats across. And I tell my staff, uh, my job is to teach you and give you the tools and to make you a better person, meaning financially, emotionally, whatever it is, to make you. And then when you leave here, which we all do eventually, I want people in town to go, "Oh, you're coming from V's? You're hired like that," because that means we're doing it right. That means they look at our place and go, "That's the place I want to take grab my staff from." And then if they're seeing it, customers are seeing it. Yeah. So everything I do right now, it might cost me money because it is. But in the end, you're going to get it back tenfold. But it's, yeah. our spot. it's here. I know it's coming. It may not be coming at the rate I want it to come, but when is it ever? But we have to see that if we do these things now, we get what we want at the end. But like you said, it's the hard work of going in every day and doing the things, but I have to do it here first. If you don't do it here first, I don't care if it's working out. I don't care if it's running your restaurant. I don't care if it's training your staff and start now. I don't want people to think, Ryan, your message, if you played it again today, oh. would be the same because you're never too late. Do not think, oh, I, I missed that. No, 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 no. Please, please start today. Start today. Because Real estate investors will always say that the prices are never low enough for them to buy, but if they didn't buy high, they wouldn't be selling high today. Like real estate investors, you know, we sit at home, we go, oh, prices are high. We shouldn't buy real estate right now. We're going to wait for the crash. Real estate investors just go out and buy because there's only so much good land to build on. Real estate prices always go up. The stock market always go up. You buy when it's low, you buy when it's high. You just buy, you just go there. You didn't miss any opportunities. Uh, something I wanted to, to add in here before we kind of wrap up is, you know, this is our responsibility. What you're talking about here, V, of like changing people, changing the industry. This is our responsibility as an owner. And um, again, this is going to ruffle some feathers and that's fine. I'm, I ruffle feathers all the time. I'm happy to do it. But if you signed up to be an owner, you don't get to only do the good things about being an owner. You don't get to just walk around and tell everyone you own a restaurant, but not pay taxes not contribute to society, not train your team. You don't get to just take money from the system and not put it back. Ownership has responsibility. And if you don't want that responsibility, that's fine. Find someone who does and sell your business to them or give it to them to operate. But we have a responsibility. If we want your business to still be here in 10 years, we have to give our part back. We have to develop our team. You're talking about team members walking with $300 a, a day. We've talked about this. Are we teaching them how to budget? I know you have, but are we teaching them now? Take $5 out of that envelope a day and put it here and let me hold on to this for you. And they'll get used to living with $5 less. And then a month later, say, look, now you've got a hundred bucks. Have you ever had a hundred dollars savings before? Why don't you give me $10 a day? And then at the end of that month, they're going to have $300 or $250 or whatever it is. And all of a sudden, after six months, someone who's never had two or $300 in reserve might now have $3,000, $4,000. And that starts the process for them to start thinking, wow, maybe if I made more, I could save more. And now maybe I could buy a house that I, how would I ever find $20,000 or $30,000 for down payment for a house? Well, in just a couple months, I was barely doing anything and I saved 3000 You know what, V, can you help me? But maybe in a couple of years, I could buy a home. What else can I do for you to make more money? So changing that mindset, changing the mindset. Yeah. And in the beginning, you may not have a staffer who takes takes you up on it. And that halfway through, they go, you know what, I'm good with that. And there's one person. And then also now one person does this. And then in two months, they've got that two or $3,000 and- the other staff went, whoa, wait a second. How do we do this? And and, and then that staff member starts yeah. telling them, look, it didn't really change anything for me. You should do And then they start doing it. And then before you know it, you now have a culture of people who want to save, people who want to work harder. The, the thing I wanted to end on here, and V, this has been awesome. Thank you so much. Um, is a quote from my book that a guy named Michael Cody, uh, V, I know you have a copy of the book. I don't know. Hey, pilot. Hey. Oh, here, <laughs> Um, 
How are you? I had an interesting flight yesterday. I'll tell you when we're off camera. Um, stick around for two seconds. Is a quote from Michael Cody, who um, uh, is a restaurant operator mm -hmm. owner in the book. He says, Pos a positive mindset is not looking at your garden and not seeing the weeds. A positive mindset is looking at your garden, seeing the weeds and picking them out of the ground. And so I think what happens here is we're talking about the mental game is we go to our restaurant, we see all the problems. And instead of seeing the problems and complaining about them, see the problems and fix them. There are problems in our industry. There are problems with your team. There are problems with you. There are problems with your menu. There are problems with your city council. There are problems with your neighbors. There are problems with the roads. There's problems with the taxes. We can keep going on and on, but just complaining about it is going to do nothing. So when you see a problem, fix it. It's a weed. And how do we get rid of weeds? We pull one them out at a time. Ground. One at a time. One at a time. Yeah. We pull them out of the ground. And then we get to look at our beautiful green garden. And then you know what happens next year? The weeds come back. But if you expect that you're going to have a weed-free garden, you're always going to be disappointed. If you just wake up every morning and say, if there's a couple of weeds, I'm going to pull them out of the ground. We get to have a nice day. Mm -hmm. And that's really what it's about is starting small. And I think it's hard not only for people in our industry to change their mindset, but as owners, when you said those words to, to me and my husband, you, you said things that we had not heard yet. So we were like, wait, that's different. And then we had to go through the mindset of, no, 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 that's going to be really hard. Like, nope, nope, this is hard. Well, yeah, it's going to be hard. And then you said it over and I watched it again and watched it again. And it made sense. Who cares and that it's hard? Less it, people are going to do it. And when you, when you take that risk on yourself, it almost changes, not always easy, but it's usually right. And I think that's what you were saying. This was, okay, we're going to do something we haven't done before. And really awesome. I looked at him and said, what do we got to lose besides the restaurant? We'll start again. Right. Well, you're going to lose it anyways. If you, if you closed and did nothing, you would have lost it anyways. So you might as well try. Exactly. And I had really nothing to lose. So you just sort of just, you, you do so, what you so said. Here's, and the try. One, here's the one constant in life. Change. 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 Change itself. Death, what are they? Death and taxes? Change, change, death and taxes. <laughs> and I can tell you how much I appreciate what you had said that day. Like Thank I you. hope that recording goes worldwide. And I, and, I, and I want you to know, and everybody else who may listen to this, that your words are, can have more of an impact than you can ever imagine on someone. What you say to someone can really change the their entire life. Like they're, they're, the way they do things. I mean, it's just, and if it doesn't today, it, it was still said and they're thinking of it later on. So it was very powerful. What you said, it was motivating. Um, and I think that whether they hear it then today in two years from now, it's important that we all have something to give. Just do it. Just, just get it here. Once you accept it here, put your feet on the ground and do it. And are you going to mess up? Most likely. But hey, I've had some really great happy mistakes in the past two years. <laughs> Took Thomas Edison over a thousand light bulbs until he figured it out. If he quit, if he quit at 999. Who would have known? Who would have known? known? Someone else would have been the inventor of the light bulb and we'd be talking about them instead of Thomas Edison. But the success is around the corner. I don't know if it's tomorrow. I don't know if it's in five years, but I do know one thing for sure. If you stop, it's not there. Yeah. So we got to keep going. See, there's a reason there's this brick wall behind us here because that's what that is, is we got to break through it. There's a barrier. There's a wall for everything. V, we got to wrap it up here. It's so awesome talking with you. Thank you so much. And congratulations. If you guys didn't catch it earlier, uh, because of some of the decisions she made, she's continued to have her best years ever. Um, so I want to invite everyone, if you like this, if you want some more of this, if you want some more coaching and some motivation and, and some tools and techniques, and you want someone that you can ask questions to, uh, take a look at our membership, the restaurantboss.com slash member. Um, membership. I'm sorry, the restaurantboss.com slash membership. And